Imagine catastrophe, the end of civilization. This complex, intricate, modern world of ours is finished. Don't worry about why. Maybe it was swine flu or nuclear war, killer robots or the zombie apocalypse. And now imagine that you, lucky you, are one of the few survivors. You have no phone. Who would you phone anyway? No internet, no electricity, no fuel. Four decades ago, the science historian James Burke posed that scenario in his TV series Connections, and he asked a simple question. Surrounded by the wreckage of modernity without access to the lifeblood of modern technology, where do you start again? What do you need to keep yourself and the embers of civilization alive? And his answer was a simple yet transformative technology. It's a plough. And that's appropriate, because it was the plough that kick-started civilization in the first place. The plough ultimately made our modern economy possible. And by doing that, it made modern life possible too, with all its conveniences and frustrations. The satisfaction of good, plentiful food, the ease of a quick web search, the blessing of clean, safe water, the fun of a video game, but also the pollution of air and water, the scheming of fraudsters, and the grind of a tedious job, or no job at all. Twelve thousand years ago, humans were almost entirely nomadic, hunting and foraging their way into every niche they could find all round the world. But at the time, the world was emerging from a cold snap. Things were starting to get hotter and drier. People who had been hunting and foraging in the hills and high plains found that the plants and the animals around them were dying. Animals were migrating to the river valleys in search of water, and people followed. This shift happened in many places and at different times. Over 11,000 years ago in Western Eurasia, nearly 10,000 years ago in India and China, and more than 8,000 years ago in Mesoamerica and the Andes. Eventually, it happened almost everywhere. These fertile but geographically limited river valleys changed the way people got enough to eat. It was less rewarding to roam around foraging for food, but more rewarding to give the local plants some encouragement. That meant breaking up the surface of the soil, which brought nutrients to the surface and let moisture seep deeper out of sight of the harsh sun. At first, they used sharp sticks held in the hand, but soon they switched to a simple scratching plough pulled by a pair of cows. It worked remarkably well. Agriculture began in earnest. It was no longer just a desperate alternative to the dying nomadic lifestyle, but a source of real prosperity. When farming was well established, 2,000 years ago in Imperial Rome, 900 years ago in Sung Dynasty China, these farmers were five or six times more productive than the foragers they had replaced. Think about that it becomes possible for a fifth of society's population to grow enough food to feed everyone. What do the other four-fifths do? Well, they're freed up to specialise in other things. Baking bread, firing bricks, felling trees, building houses, mining ore, smelting metals, constructing roads. In other words, making cities, building civilization. But there's a paradox. More abundance can lead to more competition. If ordinary people live at subsistence levels, powerful people can't really take much away from them, not if they want to come back and take more the next time there's a harvest. But the more ordinary people are able to produce, the more powerful people can confiscate. Agricultural abundance creates rulers and ruled, masters and servants, and inequality of wealth unheard of in hunter-gatherer societies. It enables the rise of kings and soldiers, bureaucrats and priests, to organise wisely or live idly off the work of others. Early farming societies could be astonishingly unequal. The Roman Empire, for example, seems to have been close to the biological limits of inequality. 
If the rich had had any more of the empire's resources, most people would simply have starved. But the plough did more than create the underpinning of civilization with all its benefits and inequalities. Different types of plough led to different types of civilization. The first simple scratch ploughs used in the Middle East worked very well for thousands of years and then spread west to the Mediterranean, where they were ideal tools for cultivating the dry, gravelly soils. But then a very different tool, the mouldboard plough, was developed. First in China more than 2,000 years ago and much later in Europe. The mouldboard plough cuts a long, thick ribbon of soil and turns it upside down. In dry ground, that's a counterproductive exercise, squandering precious moisture. But in the fertile, wet clays of northern Europe, the mouldboard plough was vastly superior, improving drainage and killing deep-rooted weeds, turning them from competition into compost.